In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Hello, I am Teresa Hardy, president of the NAACP DeKalb County branch. When Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. made his statement about people who remained silent during the civil rights movement, he intimidated that the silence of people of goodwill emboldens the enemies of the movement. Recently, many organizations composed of people of goodwill joined the NAACP DeKalb's intent to remain silent no longer about the era of racial terrorism in our county's history. These organizations and individuals make up the DeKalb Remembrance Project Coalition. These individuals are friends of justice, friends of equality, friends of truth. On behalf of the NAACP DeKalb and the coalition, I thank you for joining us today for this ceremony. This event is the culmination of our memorial marker installation, which honors the victims of lynching in DeKalb County, Georgia. The work of the coalition, however, is not ending. Even after research in the 21st century, there's been 10 lynchings in the United States of America. We will continue to strive for better relations among the races and for justice and equality for all. We ask for your prayers for our success and we invite you to join our endeavors. Together, we can make our county a welcoming and beloved community for all of our citizens. Our moderator is NAACP DeKalb Silver Life member, Albert Fields. He, we shall begin the program with an opening prayer by Ayana Holt, who is a graduate of Savannah State University. Again, thank you and welcome. Here now is Ayana Holt. For the opening prayer, I will use a stanza from the song, Lift Every Voice and Sing by James Weldon Johnson, about the violence that African Americans endured in the past and hope for a bright future. I read, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in the path, we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God, true to our native land. Amen. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The founders of this nation preface their declaration of independence from Great Britain with these hallowed words and some in DeKalb County have noticed and recognized that, as Malcolm X said, it ain't what you say that counts as what you do. And so these citizens have come together to look at the disconnect between the words spoken about equality, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and the actions of many people in this country. Our supporters have further recognized that we African Americans were sometimes denied our rights to a full life. We were refused the liberty that white citizens enjoyed and even took for granted, and African Americans were hindered in our pursuit of happiness. Institutional racism, Jim Crow, the Black Codes, and even the Supreme Court in 1857 affirmed that African Americans had no rights which the white man was bound to respect. This emboldened many whites of ill will and led to the delusional attitude of white superiority. 
It manifested itself in the devaluing of black life, the exploitation of black labor, and the willful destruction of black property. During the period from 1865 through 1950, more than 6,500 black men, women, and children were lynched in these United States that we know of. We have documented here in DeKalb four that were lynched, and we are going to spotlight them today in this activity. For generations, these despicable acts were shrouded in darkness, and the perpetrators were often never held accountable. The aforementioned citizens of DeKalb recognized that this cruel behavior, as it was, is simply called racial terrorism. They have joined with the NAACP DeKalb to form the DeKalb Remembrance Project Coalition. The coalition has sought to shine a light of truth on this violent chapter in our nation's history in general and on the history in DeKalb County in particular. And we did this by installing historical markers at three known locations in the DeKalb County area. This ceremony is a culmination of our efforts to enlighten others about this violent and painful chapter in our county's past, and also to tell the truth, which is the necessary foundation for building a more racially just future together. With this ceremony, we further lift the veil of silence about lynching in our country, and we usher in a new day. With this ceremony, we take a giant step toward reconciliation. Before me are unlit candles on the table. They symbolize the way that these painful histories have too often been hidden from the light of truth. We're gonna light them tonight. During the era of Jim Crow, black citizens of DeKalb County endured and resisted institutional racism and racial terrorism, but evil prevailed and often passed itself off as civility. It was a time of emotional and physical torment when human compassion toward blacks took a back seat to the decision of white superiority. It was a time when brutal and inhumane treatment of fellow citizens was too often a stepping stone to political and office, political office and prestige and unjust laws were also rationalized as a means of maintaining order. It was a time when a black person could be intimidated, beaten, maimed, and even burned alive with impunity. With this ceremony that we have today, we light candles for each documented incident of lynching in DeKalb County. This act reflects our commitment to shine light on these histories so that the truth about the past can illuminate the path of our future. With this ceremony, we bring together the jars on the same table, which contain dirt from the locations where the lynchings took place. Let the ceremony begin. Prior to the work of this coalition, the incidents of lynching in DeKalb County, like in most counties of the nation, were cloaked in an unfathomable silence, striving to ensure that, that these horrors are never repeated. This presentation is an endeavor to end the silence and embrace the truth by honoring the documented victims of lynching that occurred in DeKalb County. Before they were victims, they were fathers, brothers, husbands, sons, workers. They were Americans. They were human beings. This is an effort to reaffirm their humanity, their dignity, their significance. The first human being we recognize is Porter Turner. Porter Turner, 
Say his name. Porter Turner. Porter Floyd Noy Turner was lynched in the Druid Hills community on August 21st in 1945. He was a taxi driver in Atlanta. He was suspected by Klansmen of accepting whites as fares. It was illegal in Georgia during this time for black taxi drivers to carry whites in their cars. Porter Turner was more than just a victim of lynching. He was a family man with a wife and two sons. He worked hard, 60 hours a week as a mechanic and porter plus nights driving a taxi. He was 50 years old at the time he was killed. This soil before you symbolizes love. Something not shown to Mr. Turner as his life was so violently and prematurely taken from him. This soil is from the earth where he was killed. May the horror of his death and the industriousness of his life never be forgotten. We now light this candle. We ignite this candle to shine the light of love on the memory of the life of Porter Turner. Two more human beings, this time their names unknown. Imagine the indignity of being remembered as unknown. The indignity of being remembered as unknown. Say it. The indignity of being remembered as unknown. Uh, the Atlanta newspapers reported that on April 3rd, 1892, white quarry workers signaled, singled out two black men who were accused of assaulting a white girl. These workers chased the black men into the Lithonia woods and lynched them. Their names are known only to God. But it is our intention that the incident of their lynching will long be remembered because now a marker serves as remembrance and as a sign of dignity for these unknown men. This soil symbolizes justice which is something that these men did not receive. This soil is from the earth in the area where they were lynched. We now light this candle. We ignite this candle to shine the light of justice on the injustice and the callous disregard for the value of the lives of these two unknown African-American human beings. May their souls rest in peace and may the racial terrorism they experienced always be remembered so as to never again be repeated. The final human being we recognize here is Reuben Hudson Jr. Reuben Hudson Jr. Say his name. Reuben Hudson Jr. On July 26, 1887, 
A black man named Reuben Hudson Jr. was riding on a Georgia railroad train when a conductor claimed that he resembled a man accused of assaulting a white woman in the community of Redan, located near the city of Lithonia. After being turned over to the law in Redan, a mob of 100 white men wrestled Mr. Hudson from the custody of deputies, denied him a trial, and hanged him from a tree. This soil symbolizes equality. Something Mr. Hudson was denied under the law and by those sworn to uphold the law. This soil is from the earth where his life was so violently taken. We now light this candle. We ignite this candle to shine the light of equality on the inequities in our society that have resulted in the mass incarceration, income and health disparities, and the low rate of home ownership among African Americans. May Reuben Hudson be remembered as the victim of a racist mindset that claimed to value law and order, but has too frequently violated and acted in stark opposition to those very same values. The larger container on the table is symbolic of hope. Into it, we have just poured soil of the earth, which represents love, justice, and equality. It is the hope of this organization that the combination of these virtues will nurture the tree which will be planted in this soil. The tree will be called the Remembrance Tree. It is our enduring intention that the Remembrance Tree will live to see love, justice, and equality be as prominent in our society as God Almighty would want. Then, and only then, Will every American be able to say the last two words in the Pledge of Allegiance boldly with an earnest heart, with liberty and justice for all? Under the leadership of Dee Smith, the NAACP DeKalb Remembrance Project chairperson, and Teresa Hardy, the NAACP DeKalb president, the DeKalb Remembrance Project Coalition has installed three historical markers to honor the lynching victims in DeKalb County. In addition to the markers that were placed near the sites where the lynchings actually occurred, we also placed in front of the DeKalb County Courthouse a marker. Now, the significance of placing a marker there cannot be overstated. The courthouse is supposed to be a symbol of where justice should occur and where the accused has the presumption of being innocent. We placed a marker there at the courthouse to remind everybody as they walk through that door that justice denied these four victims as we know of and for all the victims unknown. I'd like to have two of our young leaders of the 21st century read what those markers say, or what the marker says in front of the courthouse. We have Layla White, who is a member of our student group, who was a gold medalist, matter of fact, competing at our national level. And then Simeon Frank, who is one of the young leaders that you're gonna see coming forth in the next few years. They will both read the marker so that you know what it says. 
The front side of the courthouse marker faces east, so that each day the rising sun brightly illuminates the painful chapter in our country's history that has too long been hidden from the light of the truth. It reads, Lynching in DeKalb County. Between 1877 and 1950, racial terror lynchings of African Americans by white mobs in DeKalb County created a climate and legacy of violence and injustice that has not been previously acknowledged in DeKalb County. On July 26, 1887, a black man named Reuben Hudson Jr. was riding on a Georgia railroad train when a conductor claimed that he resembled a man accused of assaulting a white woman in Redan. After the conductor turned Mr. Hudson over to local officers, he was sent to Redan the following day, seized by a mob of 100 white men and hanged from a tree. On April 3, 1892, two unknown black men disappeared near Lithonia after they were accused of assaulting a white girl and were pursued by a mob. Newspaper coverage was wide but sparse and did not include their names. The newspapers reported that when the mob returned without the men, it was generally understood that they were lynched. On August 21, 1945, Porter Turner, a black taxi driver who served white passengers, was found stabbed to death on the lawn of a physician in Druid Hills. Officials assumed that the motive was robbery. However, almost a year later, the informant revealed that members of the Cabler Club, a branch of the Georgia Ku Klux Klan, were responsible for his death. Each of these lynchings terrorized the black community, and the perpetrators of these lawless acts were not held accountable. Memorializing these known and unknown victims reminds us to remain persistent and diligent in the pursuit of justice for all. May people of goodwill never again tolerate such despicable violence against their fellow man. The reverse side of the marker faces the courthouse. Each day, the courthouse, which is a symbol of justice and the preservation of civil rights, may flesh the ugly truth written on this marker. Truth that the black citizens of DeKalb County were once systemically denied justice and basic human rights. May those in the county courthouse who are hired and elected to administer justice be constantly reminded of this chapter in the county's history. May they commit themselves to never falter in their duties and to providing equal justice to all DeKalb citizens. It reads, Lynching in America. Following the Civil War, violent resistance to rights for African Americans, a need for cheap labor and an ideology of white supremacy led to fatal violence against black women, men, and children. Thousands of black people were the victims of racial terror lynching in the United States between 1877 and 1950. Lynching emerged as the most public and notorious form of racial terrorism and violence intended to intimidate black people and enforce racial hierarchy and segregation. Many African Americans were lynched following the accusations of violating social customs, engaging in interracial relationships, or committing crimes, even when there was no evidence tying the accused to any offense. African Americans accused of these alleged offenses often faced hostile suspicion and a presumption of guilt that made them vulnerable to mob violence and lynching. White mobs regularly display complete disregard for the legal system, seizing their victims from jails, prisons, courtrooms are out of police hands without fear of legal repercussions. Racial terror lynchings often included burnings and mutilation, sometimes in front of crowds numbering in the thousands. In many of these cases, the names of the lynching victims were not recorded, revealing the indifference towards the injustices committed against them. Although many victims of racial terror lynching will never be known, at least 592 Racial terror lynchings have been documented in Georgia alone. May justice hold their memory and their souls be heaven bound. We must add also that the memorial markers were installed under the auspices of the Equal Justice Initiative, also known as EJI, out of Montgomery, Alabama. EJI believes that a history of racial injustice must be acknowledged and mass atrocities and abuse must be recognized and remembered before society can really recover from mass violence. EJI encourages works like 
what we've done here in DeKalb County. The Remembrance Project Coalition has been strongly involved over the last three years making sure that we were able to put together the kind of remembrance that we all could care about years from now. These works advance truth and reconciliation around race in America and to more honestly confront the legacy of slavery, lynching, and segregation. We are deeply grateful to EJI for their support. Now, also, we must acknowledge the support we have gotten from DeKalb County. We dedicated these, but we could not have done so without the help that DeKalb County helped us with, did. We dedicate these markers to all citizens of DeKalb County so that they understand and they never forget. We will now hear remarks from the various DeKalb dignitaries. We have DeKalb CEO Michael Thurman, DeKalb Board of Commissioners Representative Steve Bradshaw, Chief Judge Asha Jackson, and the DeKalb Sheriff Melanie Maddox. Hello, I'm DeKalb County CEO Michael Thurman. I would first like to express my appreciation to four outstanding DeKalb County citizens. First, our president of the DeKalb County NAACP, Ms. Teresa Hardy, Remembrance Project Coordinator, Attorney D. E. Smith, uh, my friend and fellow member of DeKalb County's Governing Authority, Commissioner Marita Davis Johnson, and uh, our friend here in Decatur, uh, the Honorable Mayor, Ms. Patty Garrett. As an historian, I understand the importance of knowing and understanding what happened in the past so we can learn from our experiences to help us deal with today's challenges and tomorrow's opportunities. We Southerners, black and white, must be cognizant of our unique vulnerability to racially divisive appeals wrapped in the veneer of history and heritage. Removing the lost cause obelisk from the old courthouse and today's dedication are steps in the right direction. Our love of history and heritage is an enduring strength that informs who we are and how we came to be. However, when our love of history and heritage becomes disconnected from objectivity and respect for others, it quickly mutates into a glaring weakness. There is a growing consensus among Georgia's political leaders, Democrat and Republican and Independent, that a more inclusive, contextualized history is needed. As Americans, Southerners, and Georgians, we must reaffirm our commitment to an American history that is inclusive and respectful of all citizens who pledge allegiance to our beloved Stars and Stripes. Today's dedication of these markers, while painful and uncomfortable to some, is a healthy first step in knowing the truth and building towards a beloved community. Good evening. This is Steve Bradshaw. I am the DeKalb County Commissioner representing District 4 and presiding officer of the board. On behalf of my colleagues on the Board of Commissioners, I wanna thank you for affording me this opportunity to address you this evening. And I wanna commend the DeKalb NAACP in collaboration with the Equal Justice Initiative for spearheading this remembrance project. Over the past two years, with diligence and foresight, this project has successfully installed markers at three locations, the DeKalb County Courthouse, Kelly Park in the city of Lithonia, and Oak Grove Park in the North Druid Hills area, honoring known and unknown lynching victims. This closing ceremony marks the official dedication of these markers. The DeKalb County Board of Commissioners has been supportive of this project since its inception. We believe it is imperative that we honestly acknowledge our history so that we are better prepared to face our future. Greetings. 
I am Asha Jackson, Chief Judge of the Stone Mountain Judicial Circuit, encompassing all of DeKalb County. I bring greetings to you today on behalf of all levels of court in our amazing, culturally, economically, and racially diverse county, as we truly represent a cross-section of the American diaspora, and we may very well be the most diverse community in our country. As Chief Judge, I understand firsthand how rules and laws exist to ensure order, predictability, and most importantly, protection of individuals in our community. These protections were not always afforded to people of color in this community. In fact, it wasn't until the mid-1980s that a person of color sat in my position as a judge in our court system. I am aware that I stand on the shoulders of giants, and I take that responsibility, duty, and honor very seriously. It is a privilege that I do not take for granted as I set forth to administer justice every day in DeKalb County. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And it is a true reminder that we are all directly intertwined and have a responsibility to act when we witness injustice. It is through this mutuality that we are called to remember and honor a grave injustice committed right here in our community and around the country on individuals both known and unknown who paid the ultimate price with their life in the struggle for human rights when they were lynched. They too are the heroes and heroines of the civil rights movement and the struggle for the protections that we all enjoy on a daily basis. Good evening. I'm the Cap County Sheriff Melody Max. It is an honor to be a part of this program, although it is an occasion that I truly wish we did not have to commemorate. The history of African Americans is one of struggle and survival. It is littered with tragic stories of men and women who for no other reason but the consequences of our birth were terrorized by evil people with no regard for human life. I use the term terrorized because the lynching of the individuals whose lives we memorialized today was no less criminal than the senseless murders of so many of our fellow Americans by other cultures who did not share our vision or our humanity. The criminal aspect of these lynchings is what I find most disturbing. As the chief law enforcement officer in DeKalb County, I share the shame of not being able to have prevented these acts, but also of not being able to exact justice for the crimes. I am so grateful that the NAACP has taken the time to pull this page from the history of our county and to post it in engraved historical markers for everyone to see, for everyone to know, and for everyone to remember. Today, I congratulate the NAACP for its boldness and for ensuring the legacies of the decent, hardworking, and innocent individuals whose memories we salute today. The NAACP DeKalb branch did not do this alone. We had over 50 community members and organizations helping us with this project that we're so pleased with. To name a few, we had the Arthur Blank Foundation, the Atlanta Shamala Center, M and Natalie Bernstein, Compassionate Atlanta, DeKalb History Center, Georgia State University, Emory University, Faith Alliance of Metropolitan Atlanta, First Existential Church, the National Philanthropic Trust, Peace and Global Witness, Mr. and Mrs. W. Wiley, Red Clay Sangha, Southern Truth and Reconciliation, Reverend Robert Thompson, and many individual donors just like you. Their participation and their support are greatly appreciated. We also have one other treat for you. We have documented this journey in a documentary called The Journey from Remembrance to Reconciliation. As we began to transition outside to conduct the dedication of the Remembrance Tree, I want to give you a sample of what this document has. The full version will be available online at 8 o'clock tonight for its premiere showing 
at naacpdecab.org. That's naacpdecab.org. And now a sample. This is blood soil. I really didn't know how I was gonna feel. It was amazing how many people said my parents and my family never discussed never it. Never discussed it. This is God's project. In the black community, we never talked about lynching. Supposedly your history, you're supposed to learn it, so you don't repeat it, and all we do is repeat it. That these people lived, they were loved, they had a life. More than 2,000 black people were lynched during Reconstruction. The black-owned Atlanta Daily World was the only news outlet to report anything having happened to Porter Turner. And they never mentioned this to me. They talked about a whole lot of things, but not this. When he got up here to read in, the crowd was already waiting. This is all part of trying to tell the truth about what's happened. Not only do we need to talk about what happened, but we need to work towards fixing it. Even though this history is not something that a lot of people may not want to remember, but it's important. That documentary starts tonight, 8 p.m. in aacpdecab.org. Now, some may think when well, I talk about lynching because that's old stuff. As the president already mentioned earlier, there have been over 10 lynchings since 2000. In fact, the last lynching was 2020 right here in Georgia. We've got our work cut out. We recognize that, but it's work worth doing. We know this struggle is not going to be instant. You're not going to be able to stick it in the microwave and say, go. We expect it to be long. We also understand it may be difficult. And even with all that, as Dr. Martin Luther King once said, the struggle will not be easy. Before the victory is won, some will be misunderstood and called bad names and dismissed as rebel rousers and agitators. But we shall overcome. The work that we have begun affirms our determination to shine light on the truth of the destructive violence in our nation's past and to strive to preserve and extend the rule of law and equal justice for all Americans. Soon, the coalition will convene another retreat to continue the dialogue about ways to achieve its goal. Let us all rededicate ourselves to the fight for this worthy endeavor. We will now conclude with the ceremonial planting of the Remembrance Tree as the members of the candle lighting and the dirt leave the assembly, I urge you to remember these words by the Equal Justice Institute Director Brian Stevenson. He once said, our nation's history of racial injustice casts a shadow across the American landscape. This shadow cannot be lifted until we shine the light of truth on the destructive violence that shaped our nation traumatize people of color and compromise our commitment to the rule of law and to equal justice. May each of us commit ourselves to continuing to shine the light of truth on this destructive violence and may we also maintain our hope for a bright future. The ancient symbol of the tree is said to represent physical and spiritual nourishment transformation and liberation, union and fertility. This tree embodies all those characteristics. It was planted to commemorate the tragedy of man's horrendous cruelty to his fellow man by lynching and racial terrorism. It's the hope of people of goodwill that the memory of those tragic events will bring about a transformation in the hearts of evil men everywhere. This tree, planted to honor the memory of lynching victims in DeKalb County, shall be nurtured to grow as a symbol of the unity among the Remembrance Project Coalition members as we strive to build a more racially just future together. We have faith that this can be achieved. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., 
With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. It is with this faith that we now dedicate this tree. This container is symbolic of hope. It contains soil of the earth taken from the sites where victims were lynched. The soil represents love, justice, and equality. It's the hope of this organization that these virtues will fill the hearts of every man, woman, and child in our county as these virtues symbolically nurture this tree. The water in these containers represents the tears shed by the loved ones of those who were so violently lynched in DeKalb County. In the words from the song, Lift Every Voice and Sing, we relate to the verse that says, We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. With these symbolic tears, we now water this tree. In the name of love, in the name of justice, in the name of equality for peace and reconciliation, with truth and light, in faith and perseverance, we now dedicate this tree as the remembrance tree of DeKalb County. It is our enduring hope that this tree will live to see love justice and equality be prominent in our county, our state, and our nation. As it has been said, we pray that it will be done. We shall now have a moment of silence for the victims in whose honor this tree was planted. Porter Turner, Reuben Hudson Jr., and all the unknown victims of lynching in DeKalb County. May their souls rest in peace, and may we, the living, strive to endure that this era of racial terrorism is never again repeated. I close with a personal note to help us all remember our individual responsibility to make this remembrance tree grow with love, justice, and equality. I pray an old Kenyan prayer that says, God deliver me from the cowardice that dare not face new truths, from the laziness that is content with half-truths, from the arrogance that thinks it knows all truths. <laughs>